Good day, my friends. Okay, uh, I'm not doing heavy snow blowers anymore this fall. So what is happening here is I took this carburetor off of a heavy snow blower over at a friend's place, and I brought it over here, and I'm going to wash the carburetor in the ultrasonic cleaner here. So the furnace is going, the ultrasonic cleaner is going. There we go. This is the little basket for miscellaneous paraphernalia right there. Do you see that? Yeah, you do. I'm going to unplug this. First, I'm just going to see if there is a bottoming out at about one turn here. Oh, it already, it already is. It was at one turn. I checked it. Some of these have a hole inside, a bigger, a smaller hole. There's one hole right, right there, right there. Sometimes they have two, but we'll not worry about it. I'm going to let the, yes Mick, I'm going to let the uh, ultrasonic cleaner do the, work, do the work here. This, actually, this is a nice o-ring if it doesn't break. It's been on there a long time. <clears throat> I guess I could leave it on there, eh? Like, use your head, Bruce. Okay, let's take this uh, choke mechanism off. I could probably leave that on too, eh? So it's just the uh, jet. Boop, 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 boop. Benny and the jet. So there's a steel ring, or a brass ring, and then the O-ring, which is in good shape as well. I'm very tempted to not cook these two O-rings. Yeah, they don't need to be beefed up in a little... Although it's nice to know the... I know it. Okay, those two O-rings are not going to get cooked. They're in good shape, too. Better than usual. Okay. What else we got here? Just the rubber seat? Oh. And what kind of... Is it a metal? Oh, that needs to be clean. Yes, it's a metal emulsion tube. I'm going to leave it in there. So just, let's see, we'll leave, let it drain to one side. And we'll hold the bowl down with the arm. I'm going to cook this for 20 minutes. That's all there is to it, baby. Should be able to submerge this. Come with me. Good. Everything is totally submerged. Cleaning switch. Timer set for 20. Cleaner switch. Heating switch. Go! 20 minutes at 60 degrees Celsius. All right. The cleaner is almost done on this little Tecumseh carburetor, which is a, uh, a project over at a guy's house. I didn't want to bring the heavy, the heavy uh, snow blower here, so I'm just doing the carburetor for him. It's funny, a minute is a long time when you're waiting. on the finger. Okay, let's take this back over to the... I don't know why, but I prefer my metal bench, eh? Excuse me, I'm moving you. 
First we're going to rinse these with water. And then our little, little miscellaneous guys, I'm just going to dump the whole little basket in the water here. Good. And we take it, i got a little bit of uh, methyl hydrate left in this container. I'm going to get rid of the water in here now. Be right back. Okay, let's just pour a little bit of methyl hydrate into this carburetor. Well, first I'm going to blow it out. Oh, there is a little hole in that guy. Good. Now, just for your info, I'll just, this is going to be quick. <laughs> the only reason why I use this is if there's any water left in anything, uh, the alcohol will dissolve with the water. I think this, this, this is probably the third time I've used this methyl hydrate. I think she's going to go away now. All you got to do is spill it on the garage floor and it disappears, right? Yeah, I don't think there's anything wrong with that carburetor. Thanks, guys. So I'm just going to reassemble this. Do you guys want to watch? I don't know, man. What this methyl hydrate is a dry, lickety split. Okay, now I'm not going to blow anymore because I could. Oh, well, this I will. Two little grass washers are going to stay there. They're very important. All right, let's get a clean rag. And I'm going to keep it one more time. Can you guys see this? Not quite, eh? Arr. There we are. Oh lordy. See, look at that. We got lots of stuff out of there. That's good. We we'll use it again. <clears throat> Alright, now let's just reassemble this guy fast. And on, on these old carburetors, you don't need to like uh, drill out the jets bigger and stuff like that. My screen's acting up. So, okay, so let's just uh, do this. And you can take a screwdriver and turn that down, and then bring it back out one turn or one and a quarter turns is the one I like. So. Half, one, oh, one and a half. That'll work. This one is the jet for the idle. You take the other brass 
washer. The other, let me just see which side the washer was on. That side, that side right there. And you stick that in there like that. And you turn it out one turn. And when you're turning these in, you don't crank them down hard, right? Just so they touch. It's getting close now. I'm just compressing the rubber o-ring right now. You getting some of this? Yeah, you are. Cool. That's closed. I'm going to go one and a quarter turns open on this one. That's one, one half, and a quarter. Good. And then the float, the needle, and we're just going to test the needle that's there because this carburetor has been rebuilt sometime in the last century. Good. And then we have our <clears throat> now cleaned and rebuilt, sort of clean, just clean, jet. And this groove in the bowl matches the groove in the... But before I do that, I'm going to get my carburetor tester hooser. Lick the end. I'm going to pressure test this. Hold it down first. It's holding five pounds. How am I going to do that? I'm just going to blow that out. And we'll start again with a... I'm actually going to use one... This is my last... <laughs> this is my last... Tecumseh 631021 Baker kit. It hurts to use the last one, baby. We'll just dump this onto here. Do we use a new needle too? It does look a lot nicer. Yep, it's going to work. Okay. There. There's a little bit of. Oh no! Don't laugh at me. Seems big, eh? There we go. Just fit in there like a glove. I'm going to put the new needle in too. There should be. There it is. A little tiny wire. Well, I'll do. Now, this is a rebuilt carburetor. Exact same parts as the old stuff, but. There we go. I think it feels even, even feels different.
good. And we might as well stick a new O-ring on there, seeing how we've opened up the... Uh, oh, it's clean all the way around, nice. Let's put it here, put this one on. So the, the, the unit that this came off of was one of those huge metallic single stage mower, or blowers, they're just monsters. So I didn't bring it home. I'm not bringing home the big, big heavy stuff anymore, eh? Oh, we gotta test this. Now this should test at least to where it was before, five pounds. Five pounds. I bumped it. You see that? Sideways. Okay, we're good. I'll just leave it sit for a minute. If it holds five pounds, it'll hold it'll hold gas. We'll test that when we're done. <coughs> okay, so we have now the hinge is here, the groove in the bowl is there. We can use that, I guess. And our bolt. Right here. I like the old, you know, I like the old fiber ones better. We'll keep that. Spares. I'll just put this guy on there. So this carburetor is done. We put in a new needle and seat. A new O-ring. Seven sixteenths wrench, just tighten it up. And now that's it. I just put these screws in here so when I take it back to the gentleman's place, they're here. Choke. Okay, that's choke. That's no choke. You close this. Beauty. How clean is it in there? Whoops. It's very nice. Yep, she's done. Okay, that's, that's enough for that. I hope you got some of it. I might try one more thing here before we go. Bye. Okay, here we have our slave tank with our hose down to our little carburetor that's hardly sitting in there because we don't want to squash it. Whoop! It's hardly sitting in there because we don't want to squash it. And you can look at it from over here. And we're going to turn the gas on and see if this baby leaks. Now it's got the bottom button. We're going to let a little bit of gas out of the bottom button. Good. Now it's going to just tighten it up a tad. And we'll leave it like that. And we'll get the mop. So we're just going to make sure this doesn't leak. Okay guys. Pardon me, we'll get going here. Okay guys, this snowblower is as old as they get. It's a single stage, all metallic, gear drive. There's no friction disc on this guy. As you can see, the back wheels are driven by a chain. Uh, originally, I tried to fix this in the gentleman's garage, but I just couldn't deal with all of the issues without my tools. So right now I'm just in the process of putting in a new fuel line because on the Tecumseys the fuel line goes through the engine to the fuel tank which is just about to be installed and it actually has a bolt going through the base of the fuel tank right through here into the head all three of those things bolt together. 
I rebuilt the carburetor with an honest to God 2031 or 2031 Baker or something like that. <laughs> so that carburetor is ready to go. But I'm just because of this chute, I'm having a little hard time reaching in here. And I have to take a little bit more distance off this nipple that I cut, cut here for the fuel line. We're almost there on this guy. And uh, I, I did warn the gentleman, and he's got brand new sidewalks, that this snowblower is going to be a little hard on the sidewalks because these tires are as hard as a rubber. And, oh, they're hard rubber, sorry. They're hard rubber, no air. And then the chains dig into the concrete as you go around and around. But that is to be concerned about later. My mission, Bruce, should you decide to accept it, is to get this engine running first and then see what all the crazy gears and everything do later. So now you're caught up. I did have the carburetor clamped into this vise up to my slave tank. And I let it sit for a couple of days actually and it didn't leak. So now, you don't have to watch a rebuild of a carburetor. We do lots of that around here. We're going to watch the little orange tiller. No! Looks like a tiller! Little orange snowblower. <laughs> okay, let's get this lift up. This is... Before, uh, this is what I couldn't do at the other guy's house. I'm just looking right now because this is all I've done. This is my fourth one of these single stage metal uh, snow blowers, and uh, one of them I had to part out. We won't say that awful word, will we? But this one's got enough grease on it, actually, and that's not a bad thing for an old machine. Right? Electric start is now mounted again. So yeah, I'm going to start working on that uh, fuel line, excuse me. Just have a nicer view. So I need to shorten that uh, fuel line a tad. I'm just, I don't want to take the chute off to get more room, but I might have to. I'm going to, oh, i got to measure what I need. So here I need just that much. So if I go into the hole here, hopefully the stud from the shutoff valve doesn't hit, eh? Well, I can take off a good eighth of an inch there. And that's all I'm going to need. I took more. And a good pair of side cutters, you should be able to cut material and everything, eh? Because this fuel line has got, is reinforced. Okay, now we need a pair of pliers to mount this tank. And then we run a bolt through here and through the top of the start. i got a clamp all ready to go. Oh, there we go around. There, that's set home. Now, I'm going to have to get in the way here and clamp, do that clamp. Good. Now, maybe I can get room, have room now to mount this thing. I need the parts. This is where you need everything. Oh yes, I'm going to clean these three head bolts. I'll be right back. All right, now I'm just chasing the threads on these head bolts. Just to get them started. Guess I don't need that washer. End up dropping that down into the gut set. And one more for sure. Now, this is 
really weird. The comps are in the old days, eh? You see right here. I can show you that. Uh, right there. And there. You need a bushing. To match the height of the head. And it actually comes up a little above, doesn't it? Oh no, it comes even to that. Are these the same length? Yeah, they're the same thing. Oops, sorry. So those little guys go on there. So it all, pardon me, but it all happens at once, man. There, back where you don't have to get dizzy. Get on everybody. Come on, my little buddy. I missed, I missed the bushings, see? Ha! That's all right. First one is the first cut is the deepest. Good. Good. Now this last bolt is a little high. Like that, eh? that? So it must need a thicker washer. Do I have one? I'll have to fast forward through this maybe. Okay, let's just run these down. Excuse me. So tonight is my happy hour with my buddies. Good. And then we gotta get that one that holds the tank in. We have to get that turned in. And hopefully that bolt isn't too long. I did put an extension washer on it. First thing I'm going to do is try a 7 16 ratchet wrench on that. I wish you could see. I'll turn you around. So we're, getting, we're actually getting somewhere towards looking like an engine again. Maybe you can see at that angle. Yes, you can a little bit. So right now it's the, it's the bolt on the tank. I'm going to take that out. And this also holds the top of the starter, so lots of lots of bolts holding on to bolts. It's an eighth of a turn at a time, right? Okay, let's run the rest of those head bolts down now. Whoa! Now I'm going to torque them. I don't know what to what though. Okay, let's go to 13 foot pounds here. Pull that down. Are you guys here? Yes, you are. 20. 15. It's probably already at 10 foot pounds there. Okay. Good. I'm going to go just one more, two more pounds because that it's an old, it's an oldie and it's a goodie. And the back ones, there we go. Around. I'm 
should have compression. I should be able to tell when I pull the rope. But now I'm going to look at the club. By gosh, I think we're getting there. Tank's on. Gas is turned off for now. Starter's on. Carburetor's off. I've got the mark on the arm for the, uh, what do you call that? Governor. So now, let's, uh, you're still watching? Yes, you are. Plug! It's an old auto light, eh? Block. I'm going to clean it up on the grinder. I don't mind it. It's a fine old plug. And then I'll measure it with my own meter. I'll come back in a bit. Alright. Just putting a tiny bit of oil down the cylinder. Turn it over by hand. It's in neutral, yes. It's not going to fire because i got no plug. So that when I forget that later, you guys let me know. <clears throat> Good. So I want to see if it feels like it has compression. Sometimes that's hard to do. Oh no, it's got compression. Plus, I just put oil in there, which really makes a difference on that. Eh? Okay, let's just put this away. Take the load off the spring and back a tiny bit. All right, where are we? Uh, gosh, we might be able to turn it over. Make sure there's nothing getting wrecked. Well, I'm gonna just squirt a little bit of gas into the intake and hook up the electrical and give the, give the uh, starter a little shot too, because that's all part of the rebuild. Or, I'm sorry, it's a recondition, not a rebuild, except for the carb. Okay, plug this in, it's weird. This should be right over top of here. And I'm just gonna take a little bit of gasoline. Two stroke fuel. I'll tilt it up, sorry, I know, oh, I meant not tilt it up, it's getting heavier. Could be me. I don't think it's going to catch. We can use this though. Okay, if I push this button, it should go round and round and it's in neutral. Okay. Now it should fire. Carburetor on. 